Hey there and welcome to our video on the gastrointestinal or commonly called the digestive system. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of the gastrointestinal system, and trust me, it's way more than just a food tube. So grab your favorite snack, and let's get started. Imagine this, you're biting into a delicious, cheesy slice of pizza. But have you ever wondered what happens to it once it's inside your body? Well, that's where our gastrointestinal system comes into play. This intricate system comprises a long tube running from the mouth to the anus, with several accessory organs that help digest and absorb nutrients. In a nutshell, it's responsible for ingestion, digestion, absorption, and excretion. First, let's see how our teeth and tongue work together to break down that pizza slice. The teeth masticate, or chew, the food into smaller fragments while the tongue, a muscular organ, tastes and rolls the food around. Our salivary glands secrete saliva, which lubricates the food, forming a soft warm ball called a bolus. Saliva also contains salivary amylase, an enzyme that starts breaking down carbohydrates into smaller sugars. Now, with the help of the roof of our mouth, the hard and soft palates, we ensure the food doesn't go up into the nose, and instead, gets swallowed through the pharynx into the esophagus. As the bolus moves down the esophagus, the epiglottis, a spoon-shaped flap of cartilage, seals off the airway to prevent food from entering the lungs. Thanks to the coordinated muscle contractions called peristalsis, the food makes its way to the stomach. The stomach is like a churning machine with four regions, the cardia, the fundus, the body, and the pyloric antrum. Gastric glands secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsin, mucus, and water, transforming the bolus into a liquidy pulp called chyme. The pyloric sphincter then allows the chyme to pass into the small intestine. The small intestine is where the magic really happens. It consists of three parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Despite its name, the small intestine can be as long as 35 feet and has a large surface area to absorb nutrients, thanks to its finger-like villi and microvilli. But before absorption can occur, our trio of accessory organs, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, need to join the party. The liver produces bile, which the gallbladder stores and releases into the small intestine when needed. Bile helps emulsify fats, making them easier to absorb. The pancreas secretes digestive enzymes that break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats into smaller components. It also releases bicarbonate to neutralize the stomach's acidic chyme, creating an optimal environment for digestion and absorption. With the help of brush border enzymes, sugars and amino acids are broken down into simpler forms, allowing them to be absorbed by the epithelial cells lining the intestine and enter the bloodstream. Unabsorbed components, like fiber, continue their journey to the large intestine. The large intestine is the final stretch of our gastrointestinal journey. It's a loop that frames the small intestine and consists of six parts. The cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and finally, the rectum. When chyme reaches the cecum, it encounters trillions of bacteria that colonize the large intestine, called the gut microbiome. These bacteria help produce essential B and K vitamins, as well as various gases. The chyme moves slowly through the large intestine, where excess water is absorbed, condensing it into dry fecal matter. Feces eventually end up in the rectum, and when it's full and stretched, signals are sent to initiate the defecation reflex. The internal anal sphincter relaxes, and the brain decides the right moment to relax the external anal sphincter, allowing feces to be excreted through the anus. So, that's the incredible journey our food takes through the gastrointestinal system. From ingestion in the mouth, being chewed and mixed with saliva, to passing through the esophagus, stomach, and small intestine, where digestion and absorption occurs with the help of the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Finally, the large intestine absorbs excess water, leaving us with fecal matter that gets excreted through the anus. This amazing process is happening constantly within our bodies, allowing us to extract the nutrients we need to stay healthy and energized. We hope you enjoyed this fun and engaging look at the gastrointestinal system. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video for learning more about the incredible human body.
Stay tuned for more exciting educational content.